Rock's Classic Rock, Q1043. Ken Dash out, Q1043. Of me doing this my whole life, over 40 years, these guys over 50 years, and it's the first time I've had the honor and pleasure to talk to one of my heroes, Lee Lofnane from the band Chicago. Welcome. Thank you, Ken. Great to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. The reason we're talking is it's my honor, and I mean true honor, to host this benefit at the Hard Rock in Times Square. It's coming up Sunday, April 23rd. Musicians on call. You've probably heard about this charity, folks. Um, and it's bringing music to hospitals. And if you don't believe, you're listening to Q104.3, so I know you know the healing power of music. But tangible difference with music for people who are sick or are suffering and our guests of honor performing that night are going to be the band Chicago. Thank you so much for doing this. All right. It's our pleasure. We love so, doing it. We love playing for people. Um, I heard that the band has supported musicians on call for like 10 years now. Has that been part of your world? Yeah, it's been quite a, quite a while now since we've been associated with musicians on call. It's great. Great to work with them. And I've, again, you know, I've, I've heard, well, I was just, there was a, a story, Peter Gabriel and his daughter have a book coming out. And it's something I talked to him about without a doubt, your blood pressure changes, your brain waves change. Why do we love concerts? Why, why were we all going absolutely insane during the pandemic? Because we weren't all together singing with our right. favorite bands. Uh, music heals the soul, as they say. And uh, uh, we have always loved playing for people in live performance. And uh, so far, no one throws stuff at us to <laughs> prevent us from doing that. So we keep, go we keep going. <laughs> the, the day people throw stuff at Chicago is the is those are the end times. <laughs> That's that when the wishing you were here right. gets booed that those are the end times of the world. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> I mean, there are times where I've, you know, in history, early 70s, like, you know, tear gas at a, a Boz Skaggs concert. Like, what what, oh. like, what the hell's going on? But yeah. so, folks, so check this out. April 23rd, uh, you know, it's for Musicians on Cole, be at the Hard Rock. And there are some amazing things you can find out. By the way, go to Musicians on Call to find out more. But you can get Golden Circle Upgrade, uh, Front Row Tables, Meet and Greet with Lee and the band. And... This is wild because I certainly wouldn't have the guts to do this. If you ever dreamed of being a member, a member of Chicago or singing uh, with them, you, once in a lifetime, fly away experience to sing. If you leave me now with the band on stage. Wow. Come on up. <laughs> have you ever done that before? Even a child can do it. it except <laughs> yes. Or except not me. Not me. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes, we have done it before also for charity and a lot of people came up on stage and I, I think it made a lot of uh, memorable moments for them. Right. Because, and uh, us. Oh my God, I can't good or bad. It's gotta be a blast. It's oh, gotta be a lot. Of fun. It, it was both. It was, it was sometimes really good. sometimes horrible, but the audience loved every moment of it. They get everybody standing ovations most of the time. Uh, it's because everybody feels that empathy when so when a when a, a star brings a, a musician, a, somebody from the audience up on stage. There's a connect. He's he's us. Everybody right. in the audience is. On and you stage. know when you, when you're practicing it, and you're practicing in the bathroom. It sounds a lot better in the bathroom than a lot of times it does on stage. So you get surprised when you. This is what it really sounds like. Yeah, it's, it's suddenly it sounds a lot different in front of thousands and thousands of oh, people. Yeah. And feels a lot different. I'll bet Lee Loft name my guest from the classic band Chicago. Um, so go to Musicians on Call. We'll put it on the Q104.3 website for all the links for tickets. Um, so I'm in addition to doing afternoons, I do Sunday mornings as a breakfast with the Beatles. I, obviously, I'm a yeah. Beatles fan. We we all are. If you you wouldn't be playing music if you were. That's true. Yeah. And this is this is such a quick funny story. I was always hoping to tell you. I as a kid buying 45s, buying Beatle record stones, whatever, and saved up my money as a teenager and got my first really good hi-fi set and got a real stereo with nice speakers for whatever I could afford. And I thought, really? what's the first album I'm going to buy? What's the first album? I know what it is. And 10 years ago, I got rid of all my vinyl. I donated to schools because we're never going to use turntables and vinyl again. Idiot. So for the last yeah. five years, I've been buying back all right. of the albums I gave away. And the first album I bought had to be the first album I bought 
with my teenage, you know, working jobs money, which was this <laughs> album. Oh, yes. Chicago Transit Authority. May I tell you, and Lee's an original member. To this day, I'm not saying this to buddy from my heart. Please tell me you know how amazing, sonically, musically, interpretively, how amazing this album is. It's groundbreaking. We learned, we learned a lot about recording during that album. <laughs> that was our, our first venture into the studio. Wow. You know, but it, rock and roll never had, there was always a horn or maybe three horns, you know, like a, in a session or something or the wrecking right. crew. But to my knowledge, this was the first big horn band to record a rock jazz album. It, I, I believe so. Uh, us and, and uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears were the first to come out with it. And uh, uh, when we came out, it was something that was approached differently than horns had been approached before because we became a lead voice in the band and not just a, a backup uh, uh, percussive type role. Uh, we had we had actually actual melodies to play and ensembles interacting with the uh, lead vocals and stuff. So it was really cool to be able to present something like that to people and plus, do it ourselves. I, I mean, we were presenting it to ourselves as well at the same time. Right. So plus, uh, one of the most embarrassing, unmentioned and unappreciated guitarists in the history of rock and roll, who's not mentioned with the Jimmy Pages and their Clapton's of the world, but absolutely is in that pantheon is the late Terry Kath. Your yes. guy was amazing. Amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm actually restoring me and Tim Jessup, uh, our engineer, uh, we're restoring a show that we did in 1971 at the Kennedy Center. And uh, Terry is just amazing. I mean, listen back to the stuff that he did. It's just, you know, you sit dumbfounded. How did you do that? But please, it just flowed right out of him. Please, please get that to me as soon as you can. I can't wait I to hear it because we'll get it to every, everybody. <laughs> because, you know, late 60s, every 70s, you know, thinking of Jimi Hendrix, whatever. But what if you combine somebody with it, with the talent of one of the great electric blues players with this amazing horn line, as you said, that was in the background, but was playing off him like another guitar, like another instrument. That's yeah. the magic of your sound. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, amazingly enough, we had no idea that we'd be able to still be doing it 56 plus years later. You know, it's like, no <laughs> way, no way. It's the same question that I've asked everyone who of our longtime classic rock bands like, you know, every in the British invasion, everybody was asked McCartney told me Ringo everyone, you know, the questions were always, hey, after this is over in a couple of years, what do you intend to do right, in a couple of years, <laughs> right? It's never over until it's over. It's it's classic rock. It's why we keep going with a younger audience than we've ever had before. This is going to be such a fun night. Hard Rock Times Square, Sunday, April 23rd. All to benefit musicians on call. These guys have open hearts and open pockets and donated their time. And the music is going to be incredible in a small place. I've never heard you in a place the size of the Hard Rock. So I can't wait for this. It's, it's like where we came from, playing the clubs. Around yeah. Chicago, right? That was the start. Around Chicago. And and actually, when we played clubs, the club owners uh, never gave you a chance to really, um, you know, do any original music. You always had to play what they wanted you to play. And that was top 40 covers. And um, the Beatles was one of our covers and major influences. But anyway, yeah, we played, you know, uh, Marvin Gaye tunes and Beatles songs and, and anything else that was on the radio at the time. And I was driving around in my car uh, a few months ago after we had some time off after our last touring season in October. And uh, all of a sudden I had a lot of time on my hands and I heard Magical Mystery Tour. And it reminded me that we had we played that back in the clubs when we first started. And we couldn't play our original music probably any more than the Beatles could play their original music, which is why they have a lot of covers too, like Twist and Shout and you know stuff like that that became worldwide hits after they did it and became very popular. Those songs again became popular. So I went into my studio and we recorded a uh, basic track of Magical Mystery Tour, then brought some of the other guys in to play on it. 
and sent it to the radio stations to see if you guys would be willing to play it. And when you said you would, finished it off and sent it to you. And uh, we'll be playing that as well at the show that night. Lee Lofnane from Chicago. Uh, <laughs> it was Billy Squire talking to me. He was on the Ringo tour. And he said, I talked about Beatles influence. And he said, look, there's only two answers to if a classic rocker, like, do you, did you listen to the Beatles? Either they say yes or they're lying. It's, it's very simple. If, <laughs> if you didn't listen to Beatles, how do you know what to play? How do you have anything? As Randy Bachman, a dear friend, said, whenever he gets asked, did you have any formal music training? He said, yes, I bought Beatle records. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Quentin Tarantino says you're either Beatles or, or uh, Elvis people. Right. There's only there are two ways to go. What I've always said on the air is Elvis and Chuck Berry and Little Richard and all those right. guys built the foundation of the house. And then right. the two pillars that we all stand on somehow are the Beatles and Bob Dylan. Yeah. And everything is layered above when every musician told me when the Beatles br brought in the string quartets with Eleanor Rigby, uh, you know, so suddenly as Gary Brooker, the late Gary Brooker, always said, I was always told, listen, you can either be a rock band or a classical pianist. There's no such thing as uh, as, you know, a rock band with a, a Bach organ solo in it. Like, <laughs> wait, but look what. The, but you guys, well, they can blew, do it. Yeah, they blew out all the rules you can have. Look, you can have when right. I when I think uh, of, you know, got to get you into my life. If that isn't Chicago centric, if that is in your harmonies. And we also did that when we were playing in the clubs. Really? Oh, yeah. Got you would kill that it. song. God, you'd be you're perfect. We, we played it into our set as we became more popular and started getting more hits. And to the point where people started saying, how come you're playing Beatles songs? Why don't you play your stuff? I, you know, you're not, I, I need to hear this song. So the, all of a sudden we had to stop playing the stuff that we played in the clubs. And I'm sure the same thing, same type of thing happened to the Beatles that as they got more and more hits, they had to start eliminating Twist and Shout and all of the other stuff that they used to do in the clubs. How come you're not be doing Beatles songs? Right. Well, you're doing all these other guys. What is this? We want to hear yours. And but, in the clubs, the club owners did not want to hear ours. They wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And that was it. Or you didn't work. Yeah, so, I mean, that's yeah. that's a beautiful transition. If you get there when the, when the world is telling you, no, no, we got that. Your music is what we came with, what we paid our money to hear. That's a that's, that's right. a that's the win. That's a great sentiment. Yeah. yeah. We um the, the guys in Blue Oyster Cult are dear friends and they're celebrating their 50th anniversary and they're wow. it, and it's it's all about, you know, the video and this and that. And and I went backstage to introduce them to bring them on. I said, so, guys, stop. You know, it's it's joking and it's trying to do the work. 50 years. That's that's a real number. A few personnel yeah. changes like everyone has had. But take a minute and, you know, look back You 50, to be a band for 50 years without stopping is a remarkable accomplishment, a couple of hits that will always be on the radio. And I said to Buck Dharma, the lead writer, singer, I said, don't think too long. What's the first thing you think of? He said, Not, Long Island, we had our first weekend residency. We had a club. They booked us for the whole weekend. And we played Friday night. We, I thought we were smoking hot. We were great. And the club owner came in after our show, gave us $100 and said, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> typical typical i'm surprised he paid him at all yeah <laughs> exactly and i said you don't forget that honey goes never i've never walked on a stage without thinking of that that moment just that's right that's right, right. and then after they became famous the club owner probably came back and wanted a little hey man, how you doing? <laughs> hey you guys remember Get i gave you here. your start i gave you right. your start <laughs> right right get out throw him out of here uh, leave Lofting. Thank you so much for your time today. I can't wait to see you guys when you come to town, April 23rd, the hard rock in times square. It's right there. Go to musicians on call, go to q 1043com I'll have all the links. It's going to be a magical night. Please join us if you can. And, uh, can't wait to see you in person and continue this journey. Same here. Take it easy, Ken. Thank you. As you can see from the Hoffner on the wall, <laughs> where, yes. my, where my heart is. I have one of those myself. And of course, be well, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. New York's Classic Rock. Q1043.